Viewers, if someone told you that roads could be built cheaper, more durable, and in an eco-friendly way, you might find that hard to believe. But the truth is, in Israel, Netanyahu launched a unique project that has grabbed global attention. Here, old, worn-out, and discarded rubber tires are being laid on the ground to build new roads. And this isn't just an experiment, it has become part of an official road network. Now the question arises, why did Netanyahu feel the need for such an unusual and innovative project? Is it really a cost-effective alternative? Is there an environmental strategy hidden behind it? Or is it just a temporary experiment? These are the questions that have made engineers and experts worldwide stop and think. Friends, if we look at Israel's old infrastructure, the reality is that despite being a developed country, road conditions have often been poor. The decades-old road network faced the toughest tests from rain and heat. When it rained, roads would flood, and when the heat hit, asphalt would crack and form deep potholes. Traveling on these broken roads was nothing short of a nightmare. Roads connecting villages to cities were particularly dangerous. Ambulances would get stuck for hours, fire brigades couldn't reach on time, and children heading to school were often delayed by hours. This situation affected everyday life and hurt the economy. Transporting goods to cities was difficult, putting pressure on businesses and foreign trade. These very problems forced Israeli leadership to find a solution that would be low cost, durable, and environmentally friendly. Against this backdrop, the plan to build roads using old rubber tires emerged, and Netanyahu put it into action. Viewers, now let's get to the real story behind this unique project. Every year, millions of old and unusable rubber tires accumulate in Israel. Usually, these tires rot in landfills or get stuck in streams, creating environmental pollution. And if burned, they release toxic smoke and carbon that further damages the environment. This was a big problem without a long-term solution. But Netanyahu's government decided to turn this waste into a valuable resource. Under the plan, these old rubber tires are laid on the ground in a specific arrangement. Then a strong cement mixture is poured over them, which bonds well with the rubber and can withstand both extreme heat and cold. Rubber naturally absorbs pressure and doesn't crack easily. Using this property, a new eco-road model was developed. Experts say this method is up to 40% cheaper than traditional roads. It doesn't require bitumen or expensive imported materials. Instead, it uses old tires available locally. Along with cost savings, these roads are more durable, as rubber can absorb shocks and vibrations. They also prove more resilient than traditional roads during rainfall. Another benefit of the project is that it provides employment for local people. Thousands of workers are involved in collecting tires, cleaning them, arranging them, and constructing roads. This reduced unemployment and gave people job opportunities in their own country. Some engineers have suggested that filling the gaps between tires with sand or special plastic could make the roads even stronger. Experiments on this are ongoing. In this way, a problem that was once considered mere waste has become an important asset in Israel's economy and environmental policy. This is not just a construction project, but a mindset that even waste, if used wisely, can open pathways to progress. The biggest benefits of this project go to ordinary people. Roads made from old tires connect villages to cities. Where it once took five hours to travel, now the journey takes just one hour. Ambulances reach patients on time, children get to school safely, and goods reach cities faster. Thousands of young people also got jobs, as local workers are involved at every stage from collecting tires to laying roads. People gained both employment and convenience. Viewers, this project isn't limited to repairing old roads or using tires. In fact, it reflects Netanyahu's vision and leadership. He showed that with strong determination, relying on local resources and skills can achieve big results. In a world where traditional infrastructure depends on loans and expensive imports, Israel chose a path of self-reliance, environmental protection, and low-cost development. This is the kind of leadership that changes a country and sets an example for the world. Viewers, land scarcity and water shortages in Israel have always been major challenges. For decades, farmers' production depended on weather conditions. When rain was scarce or absent, fields went barren, seeds were sown but crops didn't grow, and farmers could only look to the sky and pray. 
These conditions heavily affected employment and the rural economy. When Netanyahu came to power, he wasn't just a politician. He was a leader who understood the land and farmers' problems closely. According to him, if farmers prosper, the country prospers. This is behind his major project, artificial canals. Under this project, canals are being built across Israel to store rainwater and provide farmers with water year-round. These canals don't just supply water, they improve soil fertility and ensure consistent crop growth. Farmers no longer have to wait for rain or divine intervention. Water is now in their soil, providing continuous moisture to crops. These canals increase crop yields and allow for greater diversity in agriculture. Previously, only wheat, rice, and corn could be reliably grown, but now vegetables, fruits, and other valuable crops are possible. This has improved the country's food self-sufficiency and created opportunities for exports. It boosts the economy, increases farmers' incomes, and reduces agricultural imports. Additionally, the canals benefit the local ecosystem. Maintaining soil moisture reduces the effects of drought, increases fertility, and creates greener, healthier environments for local communities. The project also provides employment opportunities. Thousands of local people are involved in building canals, managing water, preparing land, and tending crops. This not only addresses water scarcity, but also gives jobs and strengthens the local economy. Under Netanyahu's leadership, this project is not just a technical or agricultural solution, it symbolizes Israel's vision. National self-reliance, optimal use of resources, and reliance on local capabilities. Its success has inspired other countries. Experts from Africa and Europe are visiting to study the model and consider implementing it in their own lands. In the end, Israel's artificial canals are not just a way to deliver water, they fulfill farmers' dreams, revolutionize agricultural production, and create a new path for economic growth. Friends, Israel has shown that even with limited resources, vision and leadership can make a huge difference. Roads from old tires, artificial canals, and modern solar cities are not just construction projects. They are examples of self-reliance, employment, and environmentally friendly development. This proves that change is possible not just by superpowers, but through bold leadership and collective effort. We hope other countries learn from this model and build a better future for their people. Friends, that was today's video. We'd love to hear what you think about these projects. Until then, take care, stay happy, and keep supporting our channel. Goodbye!